welcome to Elementary Teacher Resources. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about how I use the math journals in my classroom. If you purchase the math journals from my website, what you'll receive is 175 different math prompts that you can use for every day of the school year. Each prompt is listed on a separate page multiple times, so you can just slice them and have the children glue them into a notebook. The reason that I started using math journals was because I wanted the children to demonstrate what they were learning and add more writing into their day. Um, here's what I use to do math journals. I use a regular spiral notebook, I need a pair of scissors to cut the prompts apart, and a glue stick, and some kind of writing tool. I'm using a marker today so you can see it. And what I do at the beginning of the year is I normally ask for parent help and I print out all the prompts and I send them home with a parent with a package of Ziploc bags. And what I have the parents do is simply just cut the prompts and put all of the same prompt into a Ziploc bag. So when I'm ready to teach, all I gotta do is take them out of the bag, hand them out, and we're ready to roll. People ask me how come I didn't put these onto labels and I purposely didn't put them on labels. I wanted the children to have practice using a glue stick. Um, our curriculum has become very rigorous and we don't have a lot of time for art and craft glue projects, but I wanted the children to know how to do cut and glue properly without making a tremendous mess. So I purposely um, didn't put these on labels. I felt like this was a good practice for them. Um, with their gluing skills, so they were ready to go when they left my classroom and they knew, they knew that skill um, fluently. You can use math journals in a million different ways. You can do them as a whole group warm-up, or you could do them as a whole group like informal assessment. You could do it in small groups and each group is working on whatever prompt they need for that day. You can have it for morning work. When they come in, the first thing they do is they get their math journal and get started. You can have it as a center. Um, it really just depends on what you need in your classroom and how you want to use it. Here's how I'd start one of my math journal lessons. I would read the prompt to my class. Um, this one says, here is a picture that shows 2 plus 4 equals 6. And we would talk about what are some things that you could show 2 plus 4 equals 6. And we'd talk about it as a group. The children would turn and talk. And then I would set them back to go back to their desks and get out their math journals. And each child would have their notebook, and they would have their strip, and they would get a glue stick. And what I just teach the kids to do is to simply run the paper along the top of the glue stick. And the first time it might be a little tricky, but after a while they're pros at it. And they glue it into their notebook. Most of the time I have them do it the long way because when you're making patterns especially, they're going to need more space. So did you see how quick they did that? Um, I, I really I think there's a big value to keeping the kids using the glue sticks every day. And if you feel the paper is not sticky, so when you close the notebook, it's going to be fine. So now that we have the prompt glued in, they're going to start their picture. So um, I'm going to draw two hearts and four stars. Now, some children, this might be all the further they get. This picture shows two plus four equals six. And for some kids, that's going to be where they stop. Other kids, they might go and label it. So they might label two plus four equals six. And they might actually put the number sentence. And there's other kids that you might say, hey, how about you write a sentence about your picture? And they write, might write something like, two hearts plus four stars equals six. It really depends on your class. It depends on each individual student. Um, it depends on how much time you have. Sometimes you might only have five minutes and they just gonna, you're just going to have them do a quick picture. Sometimes you have more time and you might have them write a sentence about it. Once this is done, there's a bunch of things that you can do with it. You can either have them find a shoulder partner and they can turn and talk and share. You could come back whole group and have the children share. 
Or if you're in a real big time crunch, you just run around the room, put a star on it if they got it, and go on with your day. Um, I really like it because it's flexible. I can do as much or as little as I need to do each day. Um, I also really like it because it shows continuing growth from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. These are great for parent conferences. They're great for conferences with your principal. Um, they're a really nice assessment tool. I also wanted to talk about how when you get the prompts, they are numbered. And some people start at number one and go all the way through to 175 and then they're done. And other teachers, what they do is they just cut the numbers off before they do the cutting and then they just do it in whatever order fits their curriculum. Do whatever works for you. I hope this has answered your questions about math journals and if you have any other questions please feel free to click the contact me button and email me and I'll write you back and I hope you have a great day. Thanks! Bye-bye!